Welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Adam. Hello. And Josh. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> and as you see, there's no Tom. Tom is traveling, and he's actually back on the East Coast this week, where I was last week. So it seems like one of us is always on the fucking East Coast. Always. Yes. One Unless you're us. on the East Coast, and then one of us shows up to the West Coast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the one time Tom and I are both here, fucking Adam's gone. Yeah. Hey. But, That's, yes. You know. So, <laughs> next week, actually, I don't think next week. In two weeks, you should have us in full power, potentially next week. But, either way, we are going to be bringing you a wonderful show this week. How was your guys' weeks? Pretty Not good, bad. Man. I can't go... Pretty get much, easy. How get about much yours? time in, or was the work week or work week a little tiring for you? I didn't really gain much during the week. I felt like I had something to do after work every day, so I didn't really gain any. Yeah, I um, got back in town uh, Tuesday, so I'm flying back from Ohio, I'm in Minneapolis. You know, everything's going fine. Make my connection. I'm there in time. And then we get on the plane, and all of a sudden, it's like we're having some. Uh, issues here so just bear with us and they always i don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing they are always very open about the issues on airplanes i mean sometimes oh. i don't want to know <laughs> and like they yeah one of the engines shut off and the landing gear is stuck out and one of the wheels is flat and the computers well, aren't working so we have to land manually but and we only have three rivets left in the wing so everybody yeah. relax we'll have we'll just a couple of hiccups we'll be we'll be landing in no time it'll be fine it, so, it, it depends on the gravity of it for me like it, if, <laughs> if, if if i'm about to die i want to know yeah. you know <laughs> it's like, here's an extra bag like, of pretzels like like yeah if i'm if i'm exactly. going down i want to at least be like like okay flail around or do something i i just want to know i don't want to be like all do 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 and then gone yeah you don't want to be like like, playing fucking sudoku on your phone and then you're dead (laughs) yeah because i'm not i'm not going out like that like i don't want to go out being angry about like whether or not i'm i'm winning my game boy pocket game or not you know like like, yeah i'm gonna die okay well everything's really in perspective now and then (laughs) then go out i'm fine yeah Yeah, so we all get on the plane, and there's also a little tidbit. They're going around, and they're passing out these earbuds for people to buy. They're really cheap, shitty sum, but they just give them to you to buy because it's a 737 lot, and they have movies in the seats. Mm. Um, and all of a sudden, it's like, ah, we're having some difficulties. And then he comes back on, well, there's a lot of electrical issues going on, and we got maintenance coming. And then about 30 minutes later, well, they've um, figured it out. And this is after the power goes off and back on. Well, we think we found the problem. It's with our control, or um, not control, our um, communications unit. They had to replace the entire communications unit in the cockpit. (laughs) So we flew with a brand new communications. I'm just thinking so much of flying nowadays is talking to air traffic control and shit. Yeah. If that goes silent, how the fuck do you land? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's rough because, (laughs) you know... You don't want to be trying to land the same time another plane is trying to land or take yeah, off or, there's, or, there's, or there's circling the there. airport. Yeah. There's, <laughs> and it, it's crazy. funny how quick the things they charge you for become free. Like those earbuds <laughs> they were just trying to charge you for once they got delayed past like this half hour point. Literally, they came back around. Do you want one? Do you want one? Do you want one? And I'm like, what happened to the people that just bought them? <laughs> Yeah, they got shafted. They're like, oh, it's all disgruntled for the rest nope. of the flight. Uh, I could have saved like five dollars. <laughs> <Motherfucker's laughs> charging me for shit. This yeah. woman next to me had her credit card. I'll take some white wine. They're like, no, put the card away. And I'm just thinking, fuck, I should have got some beer. Yeah, I'll yeah, take one of everything, please. You're like, what's the most expensive thing you have in this planet? I'll take two of those. Yeah, <laughs> two, sir. Well, I do have two hands. <laughs> right, come on. <laughs> but yeah, I was stuck on the airplane. For, I shouldn't say stuck. I could have left if I want, but I would have had to take all my shit with me. Mm-hmm. But two hours spent on the airplane before takeoff of a uh, three and a half so, hour uh, flight. That sucks. That's a bit, yeah. You call the Air Command landline. Yes, Dark yeah. Soul pulled out the great thing. Of course, you just use a landline when the communications Wisdom. goes out. <laughs> like uh, so, how was your week, Josh? Uh, pretty good, pretty pretty busy. Not, not nothing too crazy. Able to get some games in. Mainly focusing on E3, which has been 
really good for me. Yeah, the- Surprising in some regard, kind of dry in other regards, but mm-hmm. Yeah, that was crazy for me. Since I was traveling, I had a lot of family stuff going on. Like, I'm trying to tune in a little bit because technically E3 starts on, I think it was Tuesday, but all the press conferences happen starting Saturday. Right. And, yeah. weird- and then, yeah. And then they had, like, it looked like they had every single uh, different little organization, gaming organization was doing, like, IGN has their E3 event and YouTube has their E3 event and PC mm-hmm. Gamer has their E3 event. And then there's, like, <laughs> so each one had their own little E3 thing going where they brought in, like, a different game developer for theirs. And mm-hmm. so, like, if you really wanted to keep up on everything, it's not, like, one event anymore. And from what I understand, the event itself was scattered throughout multiple regions too. Like if you look at the, uh, the graph is it it all over the place. Yeah. They have like, you have your triple A's in one area and then like they splinter off and there's certain companies in certain areas, like in a different center. It's all right. close. You can still walk to them all. I oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. There was, there was some in different regions entirely. Some in different States from what oh, I was saying. Wow. Yeah. So they were, they were like running them all in different, totally different areas and 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 then you have yeah so it it was it was a bit strange for me because i always thought e3 was just one big convention but they had like a whole bunch of them i wonder if that is just a lot of companies like we don't want to go there so we're going to have an e3 event over here together oh yeah yeah. i mean that's you go or they'll just or they'll just pre-record one and show it online as devolver digital did Oh my god! With their absolutely insane. <laughs> it was <laughs> big so fancy good. conference. <laughs> so long. So good. I watched a little bit, and those of you who aren't familiar, Devolver uh, came out, and for those who don't watch Adult Swim or do watch Adult Swim, their press conference was some of the campiest stuff you would ever see on Adult Swim. Like your sweetheart's going to hell, and um, that kind of those kind of shows, just crazy out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, if you don't know what Devolver has done, they did Hotline Miami, they did Broforce, they did Shadow yeah, Warrior. Yeah, they're, they're, the they're the publisher behind uh, also Serious Sam, the Talos Principal. Um, there was another Enter the Gungeon. Yeah, yeah they, they pretty much mock, yeah, they, Miami, they mock Miami. themselves as why the fuck do we matter? We're an indie game, indie game publisher. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're those guys. Yeah, that, they did. definitely watch that. that yeah, that. It's, I, I, yeah it's, very, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a big satire of the whole E3 conference thing, which it needs to be. Like, yeah. um, I listened to a lot of Giant Bomb, and I got more out of listening to them than I did anything from E3 because mm. they were pulling back like Phil Spencer from Microsoft, and they had um the guy behind uh, PUBG and stuff like that. And it was really oh, interesting nice. to hear them talk about what's going on. And I'll get into right. some of that a little yeah. bit later, but I. Took away one thing. So listen to IGN, GI, and another one. And all of them were saying, dear God, there's too many people here. <laughs> all of them were saying, because they were already bitching about how crowded it was when it was just media. And then yeah, here comes right. 15,000 people into the conference. Oh, I forgot. Isn't this the one where they're, uh, they're opening it? They opened it up for anybody? 15,000 uh, standard oh, I people. Forgot. I completely I totally forgot, forgot about, about that. that. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how that went at the, at the venue. Beyond. I heard it was, or they were saying it was just beyond crowded. I bet it would. And these are guys that are going backstage for stuff, not mm-hmm. actually staying on the floor, and they're still complaining about it. So <laughs> That's I insane. just don't understand going. You're going to wait in line um, hours just to yeah. play a game and it's, bump shoulder to shoulder with sweaty people like me that don't smell good. Yeah. <laughs> I completely <laughs> understand it from a press uh oh. point obviously that's just a yes. given but well you're there uh, for a I, you're there for a job and more so yeah. you know you're like i need to be here i need to collect the information i need to get in get out and i need to hit as many of these as i can but you have to mm-hmm. like wade through everybody you're like oh come on this isn't right and some of the people that attended are probably people like us who have like a podcast or a youtube channel right, or right. Yes. stream or something but uh, that's not their job you know that's just something they do and they figure they'd go to e3 and that would help right right and even fun, then you whatever. have a vested interest more than just i'm i like the stuff right right because that man that's a lot of effort to go through that but we'll get we'll touch that a little bit more but yeah, first absolutely. i want to find out josh have you been playing anything this week have I been playing anything this week? Uh, I played a lot of the generic Rocket League 
uh, and Drink. the PUBG. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, now that yeah, I guess that the the PUBG should be probably added to that drink list as well. Yeah. Now that we're yes. all at this point hyper yeah. addicted to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But apart from that, I play uh, I played a little insult simulator. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Um, uh, yeah. Please explain that one. So it's it's kind of like a I don't know who developed it. I should actually really know that. But um, basically, you, you're just a character, and then you just there's a little list in the middle of all these different words and phrases, and you have to come up with an insult. A grammatically correct insult, but a an insult nonetheless. Uh, it, it usually comes out with some really wacky things. It's it's turn based, so like mm-hmm. I select something from the list, and then they select something from the list, and then it, it goes on like that back and forth. And then when you're ready to to fire off your insult, you you fire it off, <laughs> and it's usually something stupid like your face is very plain, or <laughs> or your or your mom or your mother um, smells like her hat. Or like that. Yeah. <laughs> so so like some of them are really funny and some of them are really bland but it's mm-hmm. it, it, it's pretty entertaining for sure um definitely recommend for like a, a party with a bunch of friends <laughs> just laughing at it is yeah. is 90 percent of the fun um i dusted off a little bit of that disc jam wanted to see what it was all about that is a really fun game once i get this uh, jam is cool yeah i think i think adam and and nathan played a little bit of that uh, right. Yeah, I, pl- Did- I played it during the beta a little bit. Yeah, the, the beta was beta. free. I think we we pushed that pretty heavy during the beta. Yeah, we played yeah. played a lot in, in a couple of days or a weekend or something. Yeah, it's definitely a, a good time. It's it's pretty fun. I didn't play with anybody though, mm-hmm. so I, I want to sit down and actually play with somebody and see what that's like. Um, but so far, pretty good. I wonder yeah, how. This- crazy good like the hardcore into disc jammers have got it <laughs> yeah so, that, <laughs> so well, got there's two, there's oh sorry go good no no you, no go ahead well so uh, did they get better on their net code because when we were playing there was yeah, some serious we had a lot of network with, issues and not lag yeah. but just like it the two computers didn't talk well i i didn't play it long enough to really know um, I went in, I did the tutorial, I did a couple games, but nothing to where the point, like I was, I was like still getting used to how to play it more yeah. so than worrying about like whether or not there's lag. It's like, it's like when you first get into Rocket League, you're not really concerned about everything. You're like, oh, I just need to hit the ball at some point. <laughs> and that's yeah. basically what I was trying to do. Uh, just struggling with that. It was good, but it <laughs> yes yeah, so I, wasn't, I wasn't paying too much attention to that part yet if you didn't notice that means they got better because <laughs> oh, i mean yeah. th- there was okay. no not noticing <laughs> yeah. this it okay. was okay there was a struggle yeah uh, okay well then yes <laughs> and then um one more thing on that so disc jam for those who don't know was made as like the spiritual successor to wind jammers and yes. it was going to fill this void perfectly like Starbound did for Terraria kind of thing. But mm-hmm. all of a sudden, it's announced that Windjammers is possibly getting a remake. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what in the fuck is going through the Disc Jam developers' minds? The people who adopted this uh, game adopted yeah. this game because they're fans of the game that just got announced that it's coming back out. Yeah, that uh, kind of yeah. sucks. But it, at the it, same time, they are a little different. Yes. Uh, not a lot different. I mean, the perspective is different. So when Jamers is top down, left and right, you know, kind of like Pong view, whereas Disc Jam is your guy is on your side, more of like a tennis game tennis. view. Yeah. And right. I, this may be um, me not remembering right, but Disc Jam seems a little slower than when Jammers. Like yeah, you have more time that. to react. I can see that. Okay, I can see that. There was a um a game announced for uh that uh for uh, during E3 that had some interesting like I guess disc jam feel is like Pong but it's VR. So it's kind of oh, interesting. Nice. But we can talk about that a little later if you <laughs> like. But actually it doesn't really matter probably won't get into it. Mm-hmm. Uh it's called Spark. Oh. It's, like, it's like VR Pong. So you have like a whole shield and you have like, uh, you know, your little hand and, and you just like boop, 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 boop. And you just don't, nice. get, don't get hit with it. That's what it seems That's like. Pretty it was cool. a, the That's trailer was kind of a VR game, I think. Yeah, there's, oh, a, yeah, there's a few of those. There's like Hollow Ball and then Rec Room has one too. Well, there's a yeah. bunch of VR games that got announced. The, one of them that was also cool is like, you know, uh, you just kind of like 
punching things. That's kind of yeah. <laughs> that's kind of neat. <laughs> There's like they're really vague because I didn't like go in too deep into them, and they don't really right. like. I didn't see any gameplay of them mm-hmm. besides like the you know the trailer for the most part. But yeah. they all yeah. look pretty fun. So you know, yeah. things but, looking up for the VR world. <laughs> yeah. Before we get too far off of this jam, though, um, first off, first off, I'd like to play that again sometime soon. That was a lot of fun. We'll have yeah. to buy it now, though. <laughs> Start that up. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get it for PC. <laughs> And but um, really. <laughs> yeah, but they announced uh, PC and PS4 crossplay. Oh, so that's that's pretty cool. That's kind of a big deal for them. This oh, is yeah. starting to happen so much more than it used to. I remember when Shadowrun Return, I think it was Shadowrun Return. No, it was Shadowrun, the remake of Shadowrun came out on the Xbox 360. It was a huge deal because there was mm-hmm. 360 ex- or in uh, computer crossplay. This is huge, right. and now you're seeing this in a lot of games. I mean, Rocket League's notoriously cross-play, and now mm-hmm. you're getting this getting into the mix, and you have a few others like um, Gears of War and stuff like that. Well, the yeah. first one I ever experienced that had this cross-play, I don't know if it was the first one, but it was Portal 2. I mean, Portal 2 did oh, the first... Oh, yeah. Portal 2 did the first uh, like PlayStation PC cross-play that I know yeah. of. And Actually, they... And, and that was insane because I had friends that were really, really hardcore into uh, P- into PS4 or PS3. Actually, it was yeah. PS3. Yeah, it was uh, PS3. they were really, really into it. And and I was playing PC at the time, going through the Valve right. collection, and it was perfect. It was such perfect timing for me. Yeah. And then we just got into it and played the multiplayer through. It was, it was fun great. fact. Fun fact. My Steam login is because of Portal Two because I didn't have I didn't PC game at the time on Steam. Mm-hmm. So when I bought portal 2 for the ps3 i had to set up an account for steam so oh, my, what? to log in on steam i'm psn underscore my psn name and then my login stuff <laughs> okay oh, man that's crazy so adam i here, still have to use that now here's an honest question <laughs> yeah you have an origin sign in before you had a steam mm. because battlefield 3 beta was around that time and i know you and i both played a lot of that right because I think it was before that, though. Okay, okay. I know it came out before. I just didn't know when you got it because you might have been a really weird case and have an origin before you did Steam. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I played PC games before I played before I had a Steam account too, just yes, like regular yes. installs and discs, disc stuff, and all that. Well, you were about the only other person I t- talked to that played Command and Conquer. Yeah. So yeah. So that game is going to be fun to get back into. And I really do hope when Jam comes back out. Really, really do. <laughs> so did you have anything else then, Josh? Or was that pretty much your week? That's that's pretty much my week. I I mean diving into Rocket League, getting getting the grind on, trying to <laughs> trying to get to, you know, to whatever rank we can get to before the end of the season, because that is fast approaching end of the month. When, uh, so it, that's been Is it the very huh? end or is it in July? It's, it's uh, July fifth, I think. 5th, I think. July fifth, yeah. yeah. So so we're just kind of buckling down on that trying to get through as many ranks as we can it's been good it's actually been looking up we've been climbing pretty pretty quickly which has been <laughs> surprising yeah it's been tough this season my ranks kind of suck this season because i haven't played as much ranked but mm-hmm. it happens i have been getting good but that's not nice <laughs> yeah. what about you adam you've been playing much of anything i've been playing the usuals i haven't ventured out into anything new um just rocket league and uh battlegrounds but i had some pretty good battlegrounds matches yesterday um after storming somehow i managed to get two crates worth of stuff so the crates dropped down nice. i got one i got a tommy gun a bunch of ammo for it the other crate dropped i got a um like a 15 times scope and then i found an oh, sks laying on the ground and then i proceeded to die without using any of that <laughs> oh that's the best <laughs> I just got like a headshot somewhere like, someone, oh, okay. someone was so amped when they found you right. they're like oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the worst like uh, I, I watched it, I forgot who it was uh, I watched some. I watched some of our friends play through, and they had just like they didn't get anything, but they were like really late game, didn't get anything, and someone killed yeah. them, and they ran. Someone ran over to go loot, and you had they had. There's nothing there. They must have been so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was. So that's about. That's really about all I've been playing. Um, yeah. There's actually some updates coming soon for those two games. Mm-hmm. I go ahead and talk about those now, so the yeah. E3 stuff. Well, yeah. 
Yeah. What do we got going for uh, Battlegrounds? Battlegrounds is getting, um, first off, a new gun. It looks like a... Oh, what's, the, what's the type of gun where there's like, like the P90? barrel is almost right where the grip is? Like it doesn't the have... The P90? Nah, well, yeah, something kind of like a P90, but it's not a P90. It's yeah, I else. saw it. I didn't know what the hell it was. Bomb, they call that kind of gun? I do not know. I'm sure someone in chat will be able to pull it up and let us know. But it, it's a little, it looks like a little submachine gun. It's supposed to shoot yeah. 762 ammo, from oh, what really? I heard. That's crazy. Yeah. The bullpup. Bullpup, yeah. It's the right. Gun. So, yeah, it's supposed Thank to shoot soul. 762 ammo, ammo, which would be pretty cool. I like the idea of sticking with limited ammo types also, because yeah, <laughs> I don't want like 100,000 different ammo <laughs> yeah. like, lying around. But make this means an, impossible. Yeah. an SMG shooting 762, dear fucking lord. There's got to be a drawback. It's yeah, got to have like a bridge. really small clip or a gigantic recoil. wildly, wildly inaccurate or something at distance. It's going to be overpowered out of the gate. Like <laughs> it's like, like all guns that they're adding into. Oh, it's not an SMG. It's an AR. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. That, that makes it a all little right. different. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Either way, it's, yeah. it's going to be fun. Um, that one's going to be, the gun's going to be fun. Yeah, that, but uh, that's the small part of the the reveal. They yeah, that's the part it. I don't just, care about. Yeah, the cool part, and this is this is uh, the big one for me. As long as it actually works well, is uh, climbing and vaulting. Mm-hmm. So you can actually, you know, run and then vault over a fence, or you can jump out of the windows in a house, or you can uh, jump across the hood of a car without having to awkwardly do the jumping stuff like you do now and sure right, right. you can um, kill people looking like a badass me. yeah <laughs> this is huge for movement because being able to jump out of the windows of a house you know i mean you could hardly shoot out of the windows of a house right now let alone right. try well, to make, move through them it's really going to make the barred windows like there's some of the windows have bars in them it's going to make oh, those yeah. houses you know there's the meta is going to change mm-hmm. a little bit because you're like okay i'm in a two-story house and this one at the bottom floor has windows all around the base like mm-hmm. i'll i'll hang out in that one over the smaller one which before gave me a lot of cover but i can't get out of the i can't get out of those windows yeah um same with climbing i mean climbing on the roofs of houses and stuff you can right. see people camping in odd places i think on top of ledges or boxes yeah. and things like that but only if it works well because if it's the if it's finicky like getting in and out of vehicles i think is still pretty sluggish right uh, sometimes yes. it just doesn't or it doesn't register right away so you hit it again and then it registers twice and then you don't get in the car still I've had some frustrating moments like that. I'm hoping that it, it's actually more fluid than that. Well, if it does work, the coolest thing about that is it's probably going to add a huge layer of traversal for the new maps coming mm. out. And yeah. I don't know if you're going to go into those. Yeah, um, there's. I don't know much about them, but there's two. So there's, they're working yeah. on two maps. Two maps right, they're hoping to have out maps. when the game goes full version. So mm-hmm. the one map is supposed to be like a desert map. It's a little smaller, and it's going to be mm-hmm. like a desert map with a bunch of buildings that you're going to be navigating mm. through. So that's pretty sick. It's going to be cool too. Cause um, the other map is a snowy version. Like there's a snow area and then there's a forest, mm. a dense forest, and then like a, a town of some sort, but it's supposed to be much bigger. That one's supposed to be even bigger than the map that we're at currently. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And the other one is going to be much, much smaller. So, so that's are, the idea. Are they going to fluctuate the amount of players that come into a map? I don't know. Hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully not. I think a small map with a ton of people that's like utter hectic. chaos out yeah. of the gate it would be so much fun. I don't mind dying immediately like you know, every once in a while. It would just be a lot of fun, especially if they have like, if it's like four stories up, like mm-hmm. vertically, and you can traverse yeah. all of it, then it doesn't matter where you drop because all yeah. you have to do like, I'm going to drop, but I'm going to go down. I'll yeah. see you guys on the bottom left corner and then there's a whole crew above you but that's fine because you can traverse all below you or maybe you know what i mean and then if you're jumping and climbing and running it might be a really cool like parkour map where you're just jamming yeah. through doing cool stuff well I'm and cool. that would be sandstorm weather would be amazing but there's yeah. another thing they Things revealed too you guys didn't even didn't even bother mentioning it on that trailer the oh, weather or the quiz. Your favorite quiz. Thing. does anybody know <laughs> daisy, Duke, daisy dukes baby Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's for for the fashion grounds lovers. They they're adding <laughs> they're adding flannels and short nice. shorts, man. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, and zombies. I guess that's what that's where I thought you were going with it. Was the zombie? I was thing. kidding. I was totally kidding. Yeah, no, no, no. The zombie thing. Yeah, the it's zombie amazing. mode. I could care less about honestly. That's yeah, not why be, I come to this game. 
mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be fun it'll be fun it'll be another fun yeah. uh mode to jump into it'd be cool it'll be it, it'll be fun it'd be it'd just be because there's not really a game that does that as much anymore like there's not really like there used to be a ton of them all over the place that does exactly what we're doing plus zombies mm-hmm. but now like they're not very populated so it'd be kind of cool to play it every once in a while like jump into the zombies and mess around kill people as long yeah. as they do more ammo drop than what they do because <laughs> yeah. like if you're constantly fighting hordes of zombies then i don't know yeah my only thing is i tend to not enjoy those as much like i've done daisy and that and it's just the only games to me have done zombies well are the really silly arcadey like left for dead and dead rising yeah. and stuff those are the only ones i feel really nailed it and- i mean it just depends on the zombie you want mm-hmm. too you know, because there's certain horror games that did zombies really well, like the slow movers. And there's other ones that did a really good job, like like you're saying, Di- or Dying Light, for instance, did a really good job on fast zombies. Like, they're hauling ass at you, and you're like, oh my yeah. god! <laughs> <Just> like, ah! <laughs> I remember you know? watching the Dawn of the Dead remake from 2000-whatever. I can't remember when that came out. but that was I like that. That was, the, that was the first time I had seen Fast Zombies. I didn't even know that was a concept anybody thought of. And all of a sudden, oh, it shows man. these zombies just sprinting. The dude's missing an arm, and he's just sprinting at him. And I'm like, oh, my God. That would be so much worse. Those, those are my favorite. Those <laughs> that are would be down so much worse. Game. That was the really, one where there was a sign that said, shoot Jay Leno. And they were on the roof. The guy was up on the roof sniping <laughs> random people. I, I really liked, I think, my favorite... My favorite zombie concept was the one from uh, what is it War Z, where they're um, where they're like really fluid in how they're moving, like yes. they just didn't care, and they're just like smashing it. Like one would like take the corner, and, like smash against the wall, and like ten more would smash against its wall until like there was enough of a berm of bodies that they can finally round the corner. They're just like hauling that much ass at this thing. <laughs> they were fluid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was so cool. Like this, like this it's more absolute, hive mind ear. Right. Almost. That it also will, had one of the, the biggest shocks. Need. That had a shock element to me. I'd never expect whenever uh, Cruz just like chops the fucker's arm off. Like how long <laughs> yeah. you been bitten? He's like five seconds. Bam! Just off with the fucking hand. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. <laughs> well, yeah, that was. I love zombie movies. <laughs> there's so many and of them one other little small thing they did announce for battlegrounds was weather effects they're going to give you like sunset oh yeah um more rain um overcast i don't know if they're doing night they didn't show off night but if they're doing sunset and day i mean night, night would be, would be awesome. cool if they added like a well that'd be hard to balance but if they added like a night vision site or a thermo thermo site yes Yes, um, infrared or night vision. Anybody that gets those would immediately just be way better than everybody. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, the, when I uh, are we? We're, we're yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that? I was gonna say. Well, I was gonna say like in for the new battlegrounds update, like the weather effects are adding. Uh, they didn't look that dynamic. No, you, you yeah, know, they, they, like I looked at it and they're like, oh, oh, we it's like and weather effects, and it's like we have dusk. And we have day, like <laughs> dusk day and, and night. <laughs> yeah. See, it's like it, uh, it wasn't like a storm and then like you know snow and then like I kind of expecting tornadoes. But, yeah. Well, they have a snow map coming out, so I'm hoping we're gonna right. see like a snowy map. I like the idea of them having now three different types. Like mm-hmm. you have a more of like a, um, like a, I guess I would say like a generic landscape. And then the other two are like snow and desert. And if they're dynamic like that, then when you're actually in your customization character screen, you're like, what map are we going to do? Oh, we're going to do desert one. All right, let me change my loadout to a desert loadout. So I'm more hidden, you know? Right. Uh, it would be good for that. But I, I don't know if they'll ever do like a real, real deal night one. Mm-hmm. I it's would, not. I wish it, it isn't that crazy, but. Anything Mm -hmm. to give some variation to the map, I think, is cool. Yes, I agree. I think if there was to do an actual day night cycle, like let's say it's an hour, 20 or an hour day cycle there. So a half hour match, you would go from noon to midnight. Mm. I think that'd be fun. Like you drop at high noon, and at the very Mm -hmm. final circle, it's dark. Yeah, that'd be cool. It, it would every be time nice. the circle goes in, it gets kind of darker and darker. Yeah. Or it could be the other way around, where it starts yeah. night and then mm-hmm. it's high noon yeah. at the end. Mm-hmm. That would be cool if it started. I, I, as long as there's more night than day, 
so or if or less night than day is what i meant so like uh a lot of games have done that where they have that day night cycle but most of them favor a longer uh, a longer day than night and it gives a really cool effect of that impending night because you know that maybe somebody has that night vision and i need to hide through the night you know that's a cool concept of just like all right well i just need to hide and survive through the night and then I can come at it, you know, then I can come at them hard in the daytime or I know they're walking around. They saw me. There's no way they tagged me. It's like pitch black out. I need to hide until daytime. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is like it, the cycle would be so quick or so or it'd be long enough where you couldn't cycle through completely. So if it mm-hmm. went to night, you would never get back out at night. Or if it started at night, and went to day, you would never get back out of day. Mm. But either way, that makes sense. That's just throwing shit out there so um yeah battlegrounds they got some cool shit coming out there um what other stuff caught your eye there adam from e3 um well the other game i played this week was rocket league which also had some announcements um it was uh the switch version yes yes this is big it's and big? It, there's cross play for it too I don't think I'm sold on it though. I, yeah. I, the Switch is not a platform I want to play my Rocket League on. Well, it's nice yeah. to have it there, but. Right. It's I, just one of the. Nobody's going to buy. Nobody's going to buy it yeah. specifically like, okay, I'm a Switch player now. I'm going to sign up for tournaments and we're going to get really good at playing Rocket League on the Switch. It's not going to be like that. But, um, for the people that already own it on PC, it would be cool just to have that on mobile, even if it's as little as just messing around and free play on the plane or something. Yeah, um, that would. But the part I really like about it is the way they're handling multiplayer. So you can you can party up with your friends on their switches without a Wi-Fi connection, without a router, and you can play private matches against each other. That is cool. I will give that's, that. That's big. Being able to use a local area network off of a switch to do that is awesome. But yeah. the big thing to me was, I mean, you play Rocket League with others. So unless you're with others with the switch, mm-hmm. I mean, you have to be docked. You have to be right. on the internet. In other words, you are not getting any enjoyment out of Rocket League. Yeah. The second, uh, the, the second not cool thing about this is I don't think the Joy-Cons are a very good controller for Rocket League. You're yes. missing the analog triggers altogether, so it's all or nothing. It's like playing on keyboard. What about the Pro? Is the Pro controller, like, don't they have a Pro controller? Is that going to, yeah, there yeah. you go. This guy is that right going, here. Does that have your triggers and everything that you would normally expect? No. I, the Pro controller does not have analog digital. triggers. Digital as well. But to me, for Rocket but League... But you do at least get... You, you at least have the digital... Uh, the analog stick. The analog... You can still okay. move gradually, right? Yeah, you can do that with uh, Joy-Con, too, I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. that... You at least yes. have that. But That's you're not the important have thing to the me. the analog triggers. I, I mean, really, you could probably get away with it for, for Rocket League. Mm-hmm. Um, the, like, the all-on, all-off kind of thing. I, it's rough because you can't finesse it finesse mm-hmm. the, the gas but right. i mean it, that's that i mean it would be more it would be a lot worse if you didn't have the joysticks like if you only had mm-hmm. like a digital input for your uh for your joystick yeah and, and anybody well. that needs that much finesse to play rocket league if they're digging it seriously enough to want that finesse they're just going to buy it on pc anyway that's yes. true yeah it would be nice if they did pull it off because i love the concept of having all your settings and everything on this like device and then walking Mm -hmm. in and plugging it into like a LAN environment Mm -hmm. or like you know you're gearing up and then you can just walk in and plug it in i love that concept it'd be really cool if they did that for more esports where you'd maybe you can bring your like a thumb drive and as soon as you sit down at the LAN build you can just plug in your usb and go you can kind of keep it on a keychain how cool would that be like (laughs) especially like when you like when you came over to visit you know you logged into your stuff it'd be nice if like all your settings were there and you, you plug it in and play you know yeah <laughs> and they would be like transferable between accounts and stuff like that mm-hmm. it would be really nice it would it's just it's nintendo it won't happen like that it won't <laughs> 
Nintendo's not going to get behind that as an eSport. They're going to put it on their system, but they're not going to get behind it as an eSport. They'll do that for Splatoon, but they're not doing that for Rocket League. Yeah, I could see that. So with this, are they uh, bringing in anything else with it? Like any uh, Um, toppers or decals or anything? Yeah, there's some uh, Mario toppers. There's Mario hat, and I don't know what else. They're bringing in wheels. They're bringing in a car. They're bringing in a car for the doing Nintendo whole, yeah. guys, because they did it for Xbox. And they did they did one for PlayStation, which is Sweet Tooth, right? Mm-hmm. You can if you win with that with all the cars, you get Sweet Tooth. And then the other, then for Xbox, you had something two. from something yeah, two from Gears of War and something from Halo, right? The Warhawk, exactly. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. Which is kind of cool, but I wish we could use those. That'd be fun. Yeah. I, I like I like all the fun cars, and they put put effort into it. It'd be interesting to figure out what they're actually trans. Like Sweet Tooth is pretty straightforward. It's a Merc, right? It's exact. Right. It's got to be a Merc because when we're playing with when we're playing with them online, they're going to be yeah. we're going to see something else. I, I wonder what Merc. the Warhog. Right. I, I wonder what the Warhog and the other one is. Oh, oh, Armadillo. Warhog Rodeo. Rodeo. Probably Roadhog. Roadhog? Yeah. yeah. That would be my guess. For the Warthog Roadhog? Okay. And then the Armadillo, what would that be? Probably just another Warthog. <laughs> Probably another Roadhog. Grog or something. I don't know. <laughs> A water Grog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, that would, that's yeah. Rocket League. Yay. More updates to a game <laughs> that's been out for three years now? Uh, two. Two? All right. Yeah. July 5th is their, their second, uh, second anniversary update thing. Okay. Well, that'll be nice. That game's yeah. going to last a lot longer. It's part of that new um, game as a service where the right, game just continuously right. gets updated. I'm all yeah, for that. Right. I, I do like that, especially for games that are esports focused. This is yeah. This um, is exactly what I was going to say. It's very esports. Fo- it's it's an esports game. It's not like a, it's not your typical you know burner game with. You know, a simple storyline driven, storyline expandable content. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you're going to evolve it. Yeah. All right. So, but, um, uh, Eric, um, actually, what have you been playing this week? We kind of, we, we oh, yeah. Over you so far. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to beat around. I'm like, I wonder if anyone's going to throw it. I'm like, oh, no. No, 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 no. no. Um, We're not going to skip you. <laughs> we didn't forget you. We got a little sidetracked, but we, we didn't forget you. We're, we're good at sidetracking. That's, that's what this is all about. <laughs> So definitely um, some of the norms. You got Rocket League, you got Player Unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was traveling a lot. I was going around a lot. So I have the Switch. No I, had left this, I had left the Switch in Ohio, mind you, for the last three, four weeks. Oh, really? But I had it for the way back. And I will tell you, I played the living shit out of Has Been Heroes. <laughs> so I, I went... I play some of that today on stream. Yeah. yeah, I was watching you play. I was hanging out with you. <laughs> yes, Josh got me company. Yeah. So I went from kind of, I kind of like it, but don't get it, to all of a sudden, mm-hmm. hey, this is really fucking cool, and I'm starting to get the strategy, to now where it's like, okay, I'm min-maxing my characters, I'm switching up my parties, I'm lining up right. The game's really fun. Um, it's really, I don't want to say deep, deep, but I mean, there is a more depth as you keep going that you wouldn't necessarily think about with synergies between items it's not as visible as isaac's like if you get orbit tears with brimstone you get a fucking circle of death around you they're not that obvious here but there are some really good synergies you can get and um Mm. i was just gonna say anyone who likes roguelikes and likes um strategy because there's a lot of strategy in it Mm -hmm. check it out on steam it's uh, got a 9 out of 10 on Steam right now for like 90%, but it's super fucking hard. <laughs> I have had like 40, 50 runs, and I've beat it five times. That's interesting. I, the, I've, seen, I've been seeing more and more games that come out like that where you have a, a run versus like a playthrough. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, it's really different. Like, you know, you, you, like, a, like a Binding of Isaac or something like that. Um, you you play through it you, you you don't play through it you you do a run and when you're done you start over yes i yeah, love so that it's, uh, it's really interesting sometimes like me personally i get burnt out on stuff like that so it's really it it makes you wonder like how they're keeping it fresh each time and i haven't played a lot of those so like mm-hmm. i i 
to me personally, I'm thinking like, oh, like I can see going through it, like it just gets dry. They have like enough content there yes. that randomizes to where like you're actually like each time you play, it's like, oh, look at all this amazing new game I've been playing right now. Or, <laughs> or look at this whole new world because mm-hmm. I, I was also realizing once I got deeper into um, laser disco defenders or something like that, that weird, weird long winded game that mm-hmm. it's, it's a run game. It's not, a playthrough game like there's different levels that expand upon each other like a, like a pac-man or something like that where you go to the next one and it's a little different the next one you know like mm-hmm. something like that that's what that one plays like so how do you like how does this one ha- uh keep it fresh so you're locked to three players in your party one of each type you have a essentially it comes a one hitter who hits heavy a two hitter who the initial one hits really soft but he's good with spells and a three mm-hmm. hitter who's quick um, okay. And you unlock more characters you can add to your party and you sub out one for one. So the one hitter, two hitter, three hitter, you can only sub a one for a one, two for two, three for three. Hmm. Um, huh. That's one of the things, but you only unlock new ones of those when you complete a complete run. Complete a complete run. When you actually okay. win a run. When a run wins. <laughs> right. Um, but roguelikes tend to be big. Well, Rogue Legacy, not as much, but like Isaac, Enter the Gungeon. The big selling point on them is you get items, a fuck ton of items. Right. I right. mean, there is hundreds of items in these kind of games. It takes yeah. you 60, 70 hours just to get to about uh, two thirds of the items discovered. So you keep the items in Isaac. For, I haven't played through Isaac at all. Um, so you keep, you keep the items when, you're, when you die or finish no. uh, in Isaac? No, basically what happens is... Um, all the item, all the items you get throughout the game are random, and mm-hmm. as you play more, you unlock the possibility of the of new items being in that pool. Oh, okay. So like maybe but there's like ten new. items to start with, and then it's like, oh, we're gonna ha- keep adding them and adding them and adding them as yeah. you go through. Except it's yes. like a hundred to start with, and you unlock oh okay hundred more, and then you buy the expansion and unlock hundred and fifty more. There's a oh, lot nice. of items in that game. <laughs> so it's like it's like a, it's like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um. There's. <laughs> If you take all the Pokemon in existence, that might be how many items are in Isaac. There's, they're how, onto how like many, garbage bags right now. Like, <laughs> how many generations little, of Pokemon are there now? I don't know, like seven thousand, seven or eight, seven, seven, seven or eight. At so least you're talking seven, eight hundred Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there's there's, there's, a thousand, there's, really. there's a literal garbage bag. Pokemon. <laughs> they have to be running out of ideas. There's one <laughs> that's a literal garbage bag. So it's like. I don't know if they're trying anymore or if they just ran out of ideas, but I mean, that's got it. Like they're, they're uh, quite uh, like what, like a half a thousand. I think they're letting the janitor throw them ideas at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like the UPS guy gets one in yeah. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like as a kid, what would scare you? Yeah. Okay. A white cloth humped over a chair. Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sick. They're probably doing that as a joke at this point. Like, Oh, that one's so funny. There's no well, way you're adding that one well, in there. The oh, yeah, gen- we're adding it in there. Well, they did announce something <laughs> quite cool at E3 for Pokemon. They're going to do a full oh, yeah. 3D Pokemon. They're working on it. Thanks. So That'll be interesting. So that's, that's something I've wanted hype. for a long time. That's something everyone wanted for a long time. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really exciting. Like If they do that, like the later Game Boy ones had like that top down, it was like a little more three dimensional, but mm-hmm. they're releasing like a full on 3D Pokemon. And I really, really, really hope that it's more of like, you know, you're, you're battling and you're playing as the trainer and you're calling out things, but it's more of in like an open world ish environment. Mm-hmm. Maybe like targeting yes. things and saying, attack that with this attack. And just mm-hmm. keep doing that. That mm-hmm. would be sick. Like if it played more like Rad, would be amazing. I so think that would be the f- most fun way to not, do it. Not turn based, more of an open world Final Fantasy twelve kind of attack style where you have cooldowns. Right, like a fourth person play style. So like you're playing as the trainer and shouting at your Pokemon to do specific things. At I think that people. would be the, that's exactly what I want. I don't want to be playing as the Pokemon in a real time event. I want to be playing as my, you know, as me mm-hmm. telling the Pokemon to do certain things in a real world, like Zelda esque environment. Well, yeah. sir, that's the dream. I have a game for you. It's called yeah. Digimon world. The very first Digimon one. World. So fucking good. It is exactly that you're raising up a Digimon and you're playing as the, trainer 
yelling commands that you want to the Digimon. Oh. Did it work out? Oh, I, that game was fantastic. The first one was. Fucking loved it. They actually re-released it Sick. on the PS4, I think. I'm going to check that out. Okay, well, I will bite. I'll give it a shot. I'll see how, <laughs> how I like it. I like that concept a lot. It's um, really fun. Yeah, the... Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really enjoy something like that. I hope th- I hope they do something along those lines where you get a sense of scale of some of these like monsters. Some of them are are so absurdly huge, and you just don't know. Like you don't mm-hmm. you don't see them in like the two D. They always fit on the screen. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to see like an ankle of one and be like, oh Jesus Christ! Like this thing's gigantic, and I had no idea. <laughs> Ratatat almost yeah. looks as big as a fucking dragon knight, and it's like, come on, he's the size of one of its toes. Bite it It'll all you great. want. It would be great to throw out a magic carp against something like that and see it just like desperately flop in front of something like in real time. That's you know that's a fantastic. The yeah. dream, man. The dream. <laughs> yeah, the dream. <laughs> or finally seeing that magic carp evolve into a Gyarados. It goes from a goldfish <laughs> to like a fucking anaconda. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Get that game on any platform you can. If you like roguelikes and you like strategies. Has been heroes is fan fucking fantastic. Great game. And then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, quick thing on that. I don't know if Tom's ever brought this up. So they have the 50, 100, 150 CCs. Standard mm. status quo for Mario. Um, they have reverse, which I don't know if they've been doing this in others, but it was in like Mario Kart 64 when you beat everything, you unlock it. Right. Mm. And then now there is a 200 CC. Yeah. 200 CC <laughs> is the first time on Mario Kart where you have to fucking break. You have to use your it's break. It's so good. It's so good. It's the best nice. game mode. It's like it's so fast. I I had a blast with it. I played it on the Wii U. Uh yeah. and they had that. And the reverse is great. That's fun and all, but when you go to the 200 like if you're not like drifting you have to drift like after every jump like you have to drift straightaways in order to hang them like there's like a yoshi cup or something did you play the yoshi cup on 200 no i've only dabbled in 200 because i haven't been playing it enough to actually be good at 200 there's a there's a yoshi there's a yoshi cup where you it has like the switchback where you go from a straightaway and then you cut and then cut right like you do like an s curve right away but it's like a long with like a small straight in between and you have to jump and start your drift and as soon as you hit your drift you have to jump again like while you're still turning jump again to get in position for the next, next drift. drift it's that fast <laughs> you're just like doosh, doosh, doosh. <laughs> like it's just way too fast but it's a blast to get just play 200 200 it's so fun oh it was it's fun and i could probably pull a goal but i'm trying to get three stars on everything right now so i'm oh I'm, yeah, yeah i'm that grinder who will get to gotta be the completionist yes. <laughs> on that kind of game absolutely but that's all I've been playing this week. Um, I've been trying to catch up on E3. Like I said, I was busy during the announcement, mm-hmm. so I was following as much as I can. But mm-hmm. Josh, for yes. you, what is the thing you were the happiest about out of E3? Out of E3, it's it's hard to say. Like, there's a lot of really good games that are coming out. The there's a lot of them like. Like Spider-Man, for instance, is one I'm really excited about. But the one I'm actually most hyped about, which I was really surprised, was Hidden Agenda. Now, Hidden Agenda, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's um, it's up to five players. Uh, you all sit down and you watch it. If you've ever seen um, Heavy Rain, have you guys have you guys yes. seen Heavy? Yeah, play- okay. I played, he- I played Heavy Rain. Awesome. So it's the same developer, same people. They or no, they did. This is the other one. So it it plays like Heavy Rain, where you make your decision and you go through. It's the it's the horror version of Heavy Rain that uh, these people did, and oh. that's that's what that's you, you. What was it? Um, the Shropshire Slasher Killer one, uh, where you're you play a bunch of teenagers and you run out into the forest and then the killer's after you and you have to make the decisions. It's Friday exactly like Heavy Rain. No, <laughs> this one's like Heavy Rain now. Uh, but anyway. Uh, it plays like Heavy Rain. You make your decisions and you go through the storyline, right? Uh, this one, you're following like a you're following a reporter and a cop, and they're trying to you know solve a crime for this guy named the Trapper. Until Dawn, that's the one. It's the same makers of Until Dawn. Thank it you, Dark Souls. Like, you're a god. That's the same kind of uh, premise as Indigo Prophecy, which was same style of game. 
so yes it's something like that so you're following this the they're trying to solve these crimes by the trapper the trapper is a serial killer like hannibal lecter-esque that leaves um that leaves traps on all of his the people he kills so when the first responders die immediately when they come and <laughs> try to inspect the body uh but the great thing about this is the fact that it's up to five players and you sit on your couch with your phone and you guys and everyone on the couch makes the decisions on the phone of what to do and depending on how aggressively everyone chooses one or the other different things happen hmm. the most amazing thing about this and the reason i'm so excited about this is everyone also has a hidden agenda everyone everyone gets a little card that says this is what i want you to do during this story during this playthrough so it's really interesting because you get that that uh, couch co-op thing, but you also have like you're trying to you're trying to win, right? You're trying right. to win personally, yeah. yeah. And I love that idea because we do that. Uh, we do that again, like I said, all the time. We do our board game Mondays, and that would be an amazing ride yeah. for a big group yes. of people. It would be so fun to sit there, and it really reminds me of a game called um, Hidden Werewolf. I don't know if you guys have played uh, oh, like in forms where you're in a village and everyone has to guess who the werewolf is and he's killing people. Yes, at night. yes, yeah. yes, mm. exactly. It's an old game, but they remade it later. It's called ultimate hidden werewolf or something like that. And it's actually a cool little board game with tiles and everything. It's not board, but it has little tiles. Um, and everyone, you know, is a different, has a different roles. So like everyone puts their head down and then, you know, the werewolf sit up and see who the other werewolves are. And then certain people can do certain actions throughout the whole thing. But once everyone does their action, everyone sits up and they argue and they say, well, I, I'm not the werewolf and you're the werewolf. And they all point fingers and it's, it's, and they ever, everyone tries to figure out what's going on. So it's mm -hmm. really cool concept to do that in a video game, especially a story based one. So you're like watching a movie and it's going to unfold differently. And it's, it has to because everyone's trying to do something. So it, it does, it does look like a lot of fun. It looks like a fun ride, especially with everybody involved. Nice. That's a really unique and unique concept. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, it's um, um, the Jackbox guys did have been doing this sort of thing yes. using like the cell phone for mm -hmm. a long time. And there's another game like that coming out called that's you. It's a lot like the Jackbox game. And um, it's really more like a casual, like casual game kind of play where mm -hmm. you're like, you know, just doing silly things and voting on them. That's more of yeah. a Jackbox thing, but this right. is like a more like gamer vision Jackbox experience. Mm, I really like these games coming out saying, hey, we're a video game, but we're not going to tie you to a console or something. Like um, the one we did right. a lot of was keep talking and no one explodes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. That but, one's fantastic. Uh, uh, there's actually some game. stream games doing this too. And I, I just really like this unique take on it's not traditional. Yeah. Right. There was one in particular, like it was, I think it was also a Jackbox game was it? Uh, where everyone would like do certain things and everyone would vote. So if you're watching the stream, everyone like yeah, you know, um, dials in and, and there's like a thousand quip, people. Quiplash? Qu Quiplash, yeah. Yes. Right. And so you have, there's a whole, like Jackbox does a whole bunch of them and everyone mm -hmm. can tie, everyone can go in and everyone can make little, little, their own little comments. It makes, you know, uh, Twitch chat really interactive. And I hope there's yeah. more of these concepts around. I'm really excited about them. Yeah. I actually would really yeah. like to get into some of those on our stream at some point. Cause I think those kind of games would be really fun. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. What about you, Adam? Out of everything from the E3 news, what are you happiest about? Uh, there, uh, there are two things and it's, it's not the, it's not the big announcements. It's not, you know, Anthem, or the new Uncharted game. It's not uh, Mario Odyssey or anything like that. I'm most excited for The Last Night. This mm. little indie game. It's cyberpunk pixel art. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen with the, the aesthetic and the visuals and the, the art Absolutely. and the sound. Um, it has that like it's not your regular 2D pixel art game. It's like two and a half D I think it's what they call it where some things are in 3D right. and there's that depth there's a foreground there's a background uh, the camera will pan in 3D ways while there's still 2D assets it looks really cool it is oh, the man. most beautiful pixel art game I've ever seen yeah. absolutely it, 
it felt like even just going through it, it felt like it, you got a sense of the story and what this guy was going through, like going mm-hmm. through like a sense of like almost like a battling with depression kind of concept while he's yeah. going through it. It really, it was really intense as far as going through it. So I, I'd really, I'm really excited for that ride as far as the story is concerned. It's, it's definitely going to be a ride game, like where you're going mm-hmm. through it to experience what there is to experience. Not as much like you're trying to learn some crazy mechanics so you can right. get through it, you know? Yeah, well, and, and like I, I, I think of this in the same vein as like Limbo or uh, right exactly. inside. Oh yeah, you're, you're there to experience what the developers have put in front of you, well, not necessarily like a walking simulator. But like I told Adam, only thing I can say about this game right now is that it's beautiful. Other than mm-hmm. that, I don't know what yeah, the fuck this know, is. We don't know what the gameplay is going to be like. I mean, this could end up being like some really cool 2D shooter kind of game. This could yeah. just be a really story driven to the moon kind I'm, of thing i'm thinking it's probably going to be something like to the moon or there's actually a demo this was initially a game jam concept i think is what it was and there's a flash demo you can play of the original version oh. somewhere there's a website i haven't done it yet but this is like a remake or a reimagining full version of that sort of thing i'm, re- I'm really excited for these for these kind of I, I love like the really intense artistic ones mm-hmm. and, and especially indie developers getting in and actually being able to produce these. But one that comes to mind, especially going through something like this, which I'm really excited about because it, it does feel like almost like a battle of depression out mm-hmm. of the gate, especially with how sol- uh, like how isolated he feels in yeah. the group setting and how you yeah. feel isolated, just watching him move through the environment. It really mm-hmm. reminds me of like the same, like, the emotional roller coaster you got by going through uh, that dragon cancer. I don't know if you ever heard of that one. That was another no. indie developer one, and he he went through. It was just basically the story of his uh, his son's uh, battle of cancer. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's how it yes, is. Yes, yes. And, and it was that. it was really really emotional going through it for uh for everyone that actually went through the entire experience and apparent and that was probably. He he got they got an award for it um, uh, uh, during the game awards, and his speech when he went through that was really intense, just talking about it and how sincere he was, like uh, just absolutely like blown away by just be like that becoming so known. Well, it's, it's all of that about donated his... chunk yes, of the person. Yes. Yes, oh, uh, it was. Good. So cool. it was, it was interesting. I, I was, I was really excited about the concept, and that's something I really need to get into, dive, dive deeper into that game. Um, but I'm really excited for those kind of concepts, those really emotional journeys, and I hope mm. that this game is the same thing. It feels instantly, mm-hmm. instantly like that. Like you're gonna go through this guy's life, you're gonna go through this guy's story, and what mm-hmm. what he's dealing with through from beginning to end. I love emotional yeah, games. Good. I love stories and games, but I don't want that to be the game. Like the uh, one, I think Zero Dawn did it beautifully where it was great gameplay and the story was just fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think I've gotten to the point where I just don't like games that are nothing but a story. Unless it's just like some ungodly story. I just don't like those anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean that's fair to each their own. I mean there's a place for all of it, and especially oh, yeah. like a deep a deep story like this. Like going through each like having mechanics and all that is great, and I I love it. But sometimes when you go into like a really interesting story, it's it, it carries itself. I love the yeah. uh, the concept of of tearing away the whole the mold of saying like you have to be a game, and uh, like uh, when you go into something like the Walking Dead series, that was very much l- like less of a game than mm-hmm. it was a story that you watched. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're doing another one uh, about a prison break. Uh, and that one looks absolutely amazing, but I'm expecting that to be more of a story, a more of a ride. You're going to mm-hmm. go in, you're going to experience it, you're going to go through it, and it's going to be done. That's a lot like the Uncharted's and a lot like Last of Us. You know, those were, those to me didn't feel like very challenging games. Oh. But you didn't play him for the challenge. Oh, no, 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 no. Sir, you, I, didn't, you didn't play The Last of Us right. <laughs> what did you play I, it on? The Last of Us was very challenging for me. I played it on hard because it's a survival game. And right. That, I mean, that that's makes fine. it hard to survive. <laughs> but when you go through it, the things that sit with you 
is the is the story the story is amazing yeah you yes. can play last of us on on expert but the uncharted's are all really simple even if you mm-hmm. play, like you can play you can play them on crushing but i don't feel like that's the the full experience of uncharted like mm-hmm. going through it and doing it and saying yeah i'm an awesome gamer and i can make it through on like the the craziest difficulty and i'm really good at this game and its mechanics mm-hmm. that's all great but when you're done you fold it up and you put it away but those yeah. two are <laughs> though, examples of what i'm saying though where it's a good the game plays well and it actually is a fun game and it has a really good story right it, that, at the that's same what time, i like, like. Yeah, and that's that's definitely respectable. But then you go into the concept that that's a triple A title versus a you know a low budget indie game. You have to choose when you're at an indie level. And I like the idea of someone going in and saying, "I want I want this to be a really beautiful story, and I want it to be something that sticks with people." And that will probably stick with you more often than just a simple mechanic game. Especially when someone's putting out like a a beautiful story. But again, that's why I'm saying to each their own. You have like something really amazing and mechanical, but you have to remember that that's apples and oranges. Oh, yeah. You have a triple A title versus. No, no, no. It's not a knocking thing at all. What I mean to say is that you have Horizon Zero Dawn and Last of Us, and those are in their own thing. They have a huge, huge backing. Mm -hmm. But when you go to an indie title like this one that Adam's talking about, you know, you do have to choose. You can have an amazing, like sometimes some people nail it, but sometimes if when they try to do everything, it just becomes muddled and everything's bad. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you really have to choose. And if it's a story that they're choosing for an indie title, I, I sometimes I just agree. I think that's a great choice. Well, it's not, it's not a bad choice. I'm, yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. And yeah, it's rough for the indie devs. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like one dude sitting out there spending 10 years on a game yeah and comes close to triple a triple a quality <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah definitely uh check out the last the last night there's a four minute trailer with the uh, music it's gorgeous definitely look at it um but eric what what were you most happy with with the e3 announcements so i'll, I'll be the triple a not rt guy and i'll go ahead and say what i think a lot of people were anthem anthem looked fucking amazing oh my (laughs) god so um when they first opened it up it was definitely i mean there was no doubt it's an an in-engine cutscene i mean it was definitely a fixed thing and then she walks Mm -hmm. away from that guy and from Mm -hmm. that point on this is the devs i'm assuming with voiceover actors because the, the fucking voice well, was yeah. campy. No one talks like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was a multiplayer experience and it was great. So you got these people, you go to this station and then you like get in these suits and you're like, okay, I'm partied up with this person. Let's go. And they mm-hmm. lift you up. So what's happening is society is stuck in this city area. I think almost like attack on Titan. They're stuck in the walls. Mm-hmm. And these people getting these huge mechanized suits and they go out of the walls to explore and do things and get things for the city. Mm -hmm. and it's a huge open dynamic world and what's happening is you co-op you go out there and you explore it and you do things in these huge suits Mm -hmm. they're like iron man suits and from what i understood there's like three different suits you have like a scout which is an all-around you have like a colossus which is this huge tank guy and then i think you have like a really quick finesse dude Mm -hmm. but you fly like that and then all of a sudden you just drop down to the ground and you just go to town it's a third person over the shoulder shooter I did not see an emphasis on cover, which I was a little surprised about because, I mean, this is Bioware. Bioware has done um, Mass Effect. And Mass Effect did use Shooter, not to the level of Gears, but it was cover-based. Right. Um, hmm. But, yes, it just looked beautiful. This Can we was, go back on the concept of, like, the story? So are, you're saying they're stuck in the walls? No, 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 no. Like, the city is a fortress. And they don't oh, okay, leave so they can't, they don't leave. Okay, I'm with Everything you. Everything else is dangerous outside of it. Okay, that, That's I'm why I was using now. Attack on Titan as kind of like, a, I don't know if you're familiar with okay. it, where they don't leave the walls because right, right, they get right. killed outside the walls. Right, I see, I see where it is. Okay, I'm, I'm back on track with that. I was just, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is, I wonder if this is like a, a Padma inverted kind of concept where, you know, they, they live in one world or the other. I don't know. No, 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 It's not that theoretical. Well, that sounds, well, that sounds amazing. <laughs> um, but there's, you can party up to, they showed four people and people can drop in mid mission, like just like join your party, bam, they're out in the world with you. 
Mm. Um, it seems to be very open to do what you want so far. Once again, this is devs playing, so they know what to show you. They, they I'm, right. I understand that. Yeah. This is looking fantastic. They know what to show. Mm -hmm. um, but there's these open world events that they call storms. They haven't expressed what they do yet, but it's supposed to be this huge randomly generated thing that you just go into and it's this huge side quest. It's mm -hmm. randomized with um, big item drops and stuff. So you um, customize your mech. Everyone has one of each mech and you get items and you customize this mech that you it's yours and only yours. And then you mm -hmm. guys all party up and go. It just looks really cool. It looks like a, a super tight, like mech warrior customization put onto a, like a exosuit game. So is yeah. it like a, is it like an, more of an armored core or a Titanfall? Neither. Would you uh, say? Th these are small. These are exosuits. When I say okay. mechs, I'm sorry. Okay. So, oh, okay. That's my, that was my curiosity. Cause I mean, armored core would be a, it'd be a unique, uh, yeah. Kind, of, kind of a different take on the like a Titanfall-esque concept. Yes. But, um, I, uh, I think <laughs> Armored Core, with the way they were talking about customizations. Oh, okay. So you can go like, oh, wow. oh like really that deep? This guy put mortars on his back, and he was using mortars as secondaries and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So it's like okay. it's like extra armor, extra bullets. like in Different I weapon styles. Weapons oh, okay. I don't uh, think it's as deep as Armored Core, where you have armor way Armored Core is so scary, because like, you had to balance your like, battery pack with your weight yeah. and like yeah, your yeah. boosters or you choose a leg it, <laughs> not <laughs> not that deep that is oh my god <laughs> yeah it's like grand turismo levels of mech warriors like right. let's go <laughs> armor Which, core was armor, cool though for that reason it oh, is yeah, my it favorite of mech games it is hands mm -hmm. down armor core four answers was fan fantastic <laughs> four answer oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But um, it it looks really, really, really fucking rad. Um, I don't know what the release date is on it, but I am drooling, drooling <laughs> at this. But I definitely want to see more. I want to yes. see more of what the gameplay is going to be like. And uh, I, I'm, I guess, yeah, exactly. The shooting didn't I'm, look super tight. It looked like Mass Effect shooting. Well, what I'm yeah. concerned about is like these. A lot of AAA titles have been putting out like kind of generic samey games. And I hate to say that because it's like, I really want it to be amazing and I want every aspect of it. I want all the games to come out amazing and then it's like, oh, I can never play them all. You know, I'd love that's like the perfect <laughs> It's a great world, right? problem. Great I don't, problem. I, yeah, I would love to problem. have that problem. But, you know, in this scenario, especially with this, uh, I'm concerned that once you dive into the actual game, you know, everything, things could be on rails and mm. you're like, oh, I see how they hit that quality because they skimped on literally everything, you know? And, right. and that's what worries me. Like I would hate to see something like this come out and not be that great. Like, oh, the best parts of the story were in the trailer. And there was, yeah. you know, there was, it was an 80 hour game, but it was, you know, it was on rails the whole time and I didn't have any choice or, or maybe yeah. you know, it, it, that's what concerns me. So I would really, really like to see something great from something like this. This is Definitely. a company, though, that, barring their last game, has kind of garnered <laughs> respect, though. That's Bioware good. That's really did good. Mass Effect, so. Well, that barring yes. the last <laughs> installment, I have faith. But this could explain well, also yeah. part of the issues with Mass Effect is yeah. that they had yeah. a lot of the resources working on, honestly, what they probably see as their next big thing. I can see that. I can see that. If that's if that's what it is, then I'm hyped and I'm excited. I, I hope that's what it is. I just hope that like, you know, all the really good members of their team didn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know, like, uh, like I, I, it, it could be really good. It could be really bad. I really hope it's really good. It, so far, it looks great. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, Vosbeck uh, gets in here really quick to throw in that um, the writer on Anthem is the writer from Knights of the Old Republic and Mass Effect 1 and 2. Oh, well so then, all the right. Writer, <laughs> that's really good. that's the, quite uh, Let's do resume. this. <laughs> yeah, the writer is let's a go. very, very good report. All right, yeah. well, then I'm on it for uh, I'm on it for the story then. Let's, I'm on board either way. That sounds really good. Those yeah. were the, my favorite uh, Mass Effects, obviously. Yes. It'd be really dumb to say that that, were, that was weren't your favorite. Mass My Effect. favorite was Andromeda. <laughs> yeah, yes. I really like. I really like three for the end. Honestly, I, I didn't play any <laughs> of them. But. but yeah, so I'm pumped. Um, just I'm trying to not drool because I will die of dehydration by the time this game comes out in probably two years. I would not be surprised. If this is an early 2019 title. So it's oh, a co-op yeah. game, right? Like it's a co-op yeah. playthrough yes. game. So yes. there is there AI 
is there AI like partners that you're going to be navigating? So I think I'm sure I there heard is. some people talking that if you don't have a person to play with you, you will do a co-op. So with that's the what computer, I'm, with the computer, sorry. Well, that's what I'm thinking about. Cause I think my favorite things about Mass Effect 1 and 2 wasn't the story. Like I didn't like, uh, the story was fine. Like it was okay. But like the best part about Mass Effect 1 and 2 was the characters that you were with and mm -hmm. how you actually gave a shit about every character you know like you really cared for them and you were really like i want you to succeed or you know or i hate you but i hate you for a really good reason you know like yeah and yeah. uh i i want that and there's not a lot of games that do that mm -hmm. so I, I i hope that especially some something with a resume like that is going to do something along those lines maybe it's the people you interact with maybe it's their issues that they, you have to resolve and mm -hmm. that's how you're going to handle it like you know handle the caring aspect of it um, <laughs> yeah. and that, that that's fine i'd be happy with that i don't think you're going to have yeah. those kind of partners and stuff though but we'll see oh that's okay that's okay <laughs> it can um, still be great <laughs> so josh Yes. For you, what was the most disappointing thing about E3? Something that wasn't there, something that was there and terrible, or some twist they threw at you? Uh, I mean, there was a lot of things that I wasn't super excited about. The biggest thing that I was bummed about, I think, is probably got to be the Skyrim. Like, just, <laughs> just, just the fact that Bethesda's just not they letting it die it, they're well, milking it, it for they, everything they, they just keep putting it out and i i'm like I, okay like you're doing that and then you all then they also it's really just bethesda as a whole that bothered me during this mm -hmm. one and they and they put out the pay the paid deals the paid, yes, uh, the paid mods. mods and i mean that's that triggers an entirely separate <laughs> conversation and I, i'm gonna yeah. leave that one on the shelf and we'll come back yeah. to that maybe another podcast entirely yeah we'll leave um, that one at another but, time <laughs> but as far as just like re-releasing skyrim it makes me really disappointed it makes me disappointed because they've come up with some of the best worlds that i've come you know played through i've spent mm -hmm. the time and actually played through these games and experienced most of what's there mm -hmm. and and it takes forever to do that but it's just like when you keep pumping out Skyrim over and over again, just, just like, just come on. Like, unless they're, they're biding their time for a, a, an amazing sequel Six, and uh, for, a, for yeah. a sixth installment. It, right. I mean, they have to put out a sixth. They just, so, they absolutely have to. Who is the person right now who saw that announcement? like, yes, it's back again. Who yeah, is that guy? It, I mean, really? It, it's the guy on the switch that hasn't played it. Yeah, that's the guy. Well, like, listen, yeah. if you want to play it that bad, I mean, you would have by now. That's yeah, true. That's between kind of, the the console release and then the PC release and then, and then all another the console and release. Yeah, and They've, another console and the re, release and the re-release and yeah. the remastering and the uh, upgraded water textures. Yeah, like, the they, thing with all, they they kept putting it out, and it, 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 yeah. that's a good point. That's a really good point. Like if if you haven't played it. And you got all the way to the Switch and still haven't played it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd love to see the numbers when they finally the, release it. Like the thing with this being re-released again, and don't get me wrong, Skyrim was a really good game. I put probably a hundred or two hundred hours into it between PS4 and PC, but it's not the you know super crazy high regarded classic. It's not a must play of our generation. You know it, they're not remaking. Kotor. Uh, yeah they're not remaking kotor or you know another well, reboot of the first mega man or something like it's yeah. not it's, it's not metal gear solid one remake it's well it's, the i i it is a great game and it is yeah. probably a game of our generation i could argue that you know i played but some of it they're not they're, it not, re, they're not they're not re, they're well it doesn't stand out because of it's the same as when it first came out well, no, what it I was first came say out a long time ago. It doesn't stand out to me like, oh my God, this is so much better than Oblivion. Just as Oblivion didn't stand out like, oh my God, this is so much better than Morrowind. Mm -hmm. They're right, iterations but it's a ride. on it's themselves. A, right, but it's just a different ride. You know, it's the same concept. It's it's a game that you're going to play. They're just like Fallout's, like the Fallout's don't differ that much. They're, there's little bits like diehard Fallout fans and diehard, you know, Elder Scrolls fans are going to be like, oh, you guys are idiots. But, you know, um, cool. like as far as Skyrim is concerned, I mean, it's very pretty. Like your experience going through it is fantastic, but it was great for that time period. 
but they're not doing anything with it each time they they put it out they're not opening up a whole new island that i call yeah we're putting it out for the switch but we're gonna also put out this giant new island oh yeah we're gonna put it out with motion controls but we're gonna add all these new objects that you can interact with in a, in a new inventive way and a new land to visit that mm-hmm. like, you know, favors your motion controls. They're not doing anything like that. They're just saying like, Oh, remember that game? Here's the exact same game. And when they re-release like the more textures, the textures weren't that much better than the default textures. And, and if you played on PC, up. well, if you were playing on PC, you know, you can play it 10 times the quality yeah, out of the gate, mods. like out of the great with out of the gate with mods. So here's my so, question. This is their first time writing to the Switch. Bethesda fucked up the re-release of a game that had been out for four years at the point. How bad are they going to fuck up the Switch release? And then how much <laughs> is Nintendo going to rip their ass for it? I don't I mean, know. I wonder how I don't buggy know. it's going to be. It might be pretty buggy. It might be pretty bad. I, I, um, I'm, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's why I'm so disappointed because yeah. I just don't care. Like, if it comes out and it's really bad and they fuck it up, like it's just genuinely just disappointment across the board. I just genuinely don't care. If mm-hmm. I, like, I'm, just, I think most people are at the same level. They're just like, eh, <laughs> <laughs> cool. I it's guess. great like, because yeah. initially this was one of the huge selling points of the Switch. Oh, they're gonna get yeah. Skyrim, and now even the people who had the Switch are like, really? We got we we don't need this. We have some other yeah. stuff now. And I was, you know, when I first heard that Skyrim was coming to the Switch before the Switch came out, I thought that was cool. I thought that was a good idea, you know, to mm-hmm. get those third-party games on there. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, the yeah. cool thing, the coolest thing about it is like the the VR capabilities of the of the other versions. Like the fact mm-hmm. that you can kind of experience this world in VR. Yeah, yeah, great. It's okay. Like it's just okay. I just don't want to experience the same ride over again. I'm not going to touch it. And I think that's what was disappointing was just Bethesda, not necessarily Skyrim, because I don't care. It's more yeah. the Bethesda that I'm disappointed with. I just like I I, I really hope they're they're trying to put out something really great, <laughs> you know. But it's just that was that was my that was my most disappointing point what of that E3 for sure. What about you, Adam? What stuck out to you as damn that sucked? Uh, well. There's a lot of stuff I just didn't care about or wasn't that excited about. But the, I was really, really hoping to get another, at least another trailer for The Last of Us 2. Because mm. I am so excited for that game and I want to see more of it. And I don't know how close, you know, how far into development they are. But uh, I was hoping to get something on that and I was hoping to get something on Death Stranding, even though I know that's pretty early on. Yeah, I think we're going to be lucky to get something of Death Stranding at the Game Awards this year, if we're yeah. lucky. Yeah, from what I understand, it's pretty much all mostly concept at this point. I don't know that they've even built assets yet. So, yeah. Though The Last of Us, of The Last of Us, I kind of was expecting that. I expected that yeah. to honestly be Sony's, here we are. You got right. your PS4 Pro, look how mm. fucking gorgeous this brand new game's going to be. Yeah, that's right. what I was kind of hoping for, and it just it wasn't there at all. I didn't see anything. Uh, even just another trailer, like a second trailer, would have been fine. Right, even, yeah, something. But, I mean, they did, they did show uh, Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's I'm the next best with. thing, obviously. I mean, if you had a choice... <laughs> You know, my, fr- my favorite game of all time is The Last of Us. My second favorite game of all time is Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> because there's, there's, so there's, many there's the same style game. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just... Crash is struggling. No, the, the first The Last of Us 2 trailer brought up so many questions for me. Yes. And I was hoping there would be a second trailer to maybe answer those questions. But um, yeah, that's, that was, that's what I was kind of disappointed by. What about you, Eric? Um, so Microsoft, as everyone knows at this point, as releasing the Xbox X is now what was formerly known as Scorpio, the strongest console in the world. The Xbox One X box. Yeah. No, no. So there was something funny. Someone put this up. So you have an an Xbox. It comes in an Xbox box. You have an Xbox One. It comes in an Xbox One box. Then you have an Xbox X or Xbox One X. So it comes in an Xbox One Xbox. (laughs) <laughs> it comes in one xbox one x box. where does it end it? <laughs> but um so this powerhouse system sony when they uh right before the pro was their psvr 
um microsoft has hololens they have what is probably going to end up being one of the premier uh, mixed realities what they're calling it um things because it's actually a hologram stuff as well as virtual reality it's the the best thing going but it's ultra expensive right so i'm thinking microsoft powerhouse system here it comes they're going to announce they're partnering with oculus or vive or they're making some vr headset of their own off of the hololens technology nope nothing they said <laughs> nothing about vr in fact um giant bomb had phil spencer on and he said yes we like vr we're working with vr our xbox one x is not for vr right now the people who are buying this are not people who would care about it they are just really un- pretty much he said people who buy that don't need to buy it and they're just people who want the power huh which i thought was honest uh, like which a great are the honesty people moment. that might want vr i don't know if it is though <sighs> Maybe. it's it's I weird mean, and he also said that vr with the cables that there currently is is not suited well for the living room because it's not social he oh, says that like yeah. the console life is more social than what vr is right now and all that kind of stuff but that shocked me mm-hmm. it's, I, that seems to be more of like a that seems to be like a marketing concept rather than like a, a like what nintendo and sony have been doing like it seems more of like a marketing thing you know yeah like oh if i look at my statistics my statistics say that we mainly cater to people that do couch co-op it's like because you guys don't really have a vr thing like oh yeah well you know statistics well the vr (laughs) numbers vr numbers are really low right now we're doing i think that's doing quite well right it's only sold like a quarter million headsets or something like that I that's think. not that's not bad for vr i mean vr as a whole there's not a lot of yeah, sales v- right? vr a I whole mean, right now it it's hard pressed to be like yes we need to make a 400 hundred dollar headset to sell to this right. small of a population for all they the- just need to they just need to make it more accessible if they could put out like you know a cheaper headset a cheaper you know a cheaper vive you know i know that for a while they're were, they're were planning on putting out a um consumer version that was more for like the general populace so that's like way cheaper if they do something like that and like the technology gets cheaper you're gonna see a lot more people using it i know tech, i would the tech has to get cheaper though because i'm telling you right now i've been in i have a vive i would not buy a cheaper vibe if it meant i got worse technology right because you would get you would get sick the vibe is no i agree yeah it's it's just a really weird thing but i I was oh sorry oh no yeah i did the playstation vr and that was that was the best one i that wasn't the best one i used i used the vive at one point and there's a big difference as far as like how you feel but um the playstation one wasn't wasn't too bad um but it did feel a little weird at the end of it um especially like because it didn't sync quite right and so like you got used to you got used to it and then when you came out of it for me it was like when i came out of it like when i reached for things normally like my hands (laughs) my hands didn't really quite make it to where i thought they'd make it (laughs) you're spilling things all over the cupboard that's a strange (laughs) (laughs) it's a strange problem to have all right so one more question for y'all josh what surprised you out of e3 surprised me i mean really i think i'd probably the the one that surprised me the most as far as like one that i didn't think of or or or, uh see coming was probably beyond good and evil 2. um Mm. just the announcement really for that was pretty exciting i mean i know that i haven't played a lot of the original beyond good and evil but from what i understand that's one of the one of the better uh, hidden gem games like it, when you talk about hidden gen, gem games like of our generation the biggest ones you hear about are psychonauts and beyond good and evil and the mm-hmm. sequel is coming out it, it's 15 years in the making or something like that like they've been oh wow. it's, it, it, the people that love this uh franchise or that that original game um have been waiting for 15 years for the sequel that's and cool. the trailer for it was insane obviously yeah. it was all cgi but just like that's how you announce it that's why yeah. i wasn't ex- excited for like the metroid 4 because it's like oh here's a jpeg image you know like, like right. yeah <laughs> good job yeah i did doing. watch that i did watch that trailer today it did look pretty cool and i uh, i don't i don't know anything about beyond good and evil I've so never... i actually don't either i don't know a ton about it i i got it I am going to start playing it. And I'm going to report back. Apparently, it's one of the best rides as far as like uh, 
uh, that kind of interaction that you can get, um, yes. like dealing dealing with like your uh, the people around you in the world is supposed to be very very deep, and hmm. you actually are supposed to care for everyone around you. It does a really good job about that. Um, so I'm gonna put on that you know my glasses for that time period, right? Because <laughs> you have to take it with a grain of salt and right. uh, get through it. And uh, yeah, I think that that was the most surprising one for me. I did not expect that one to be really. Yeah. What about you, Adam? What was your big oh shit moment? Uh, this is close to my heart because this is one of my favorite games. But what surprised me the most and also excited me was a remake for Shadow of the Colossus. So, not a remaster, a remake. And why this is surprising is because they just remastered it for the PS3. Yes. And now it's getting another remake for the PS4. But it's gonna look so good. <laughs> it's 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 in my top five favorite games of all time. So anytime it gets redone to be to work with the modern the modern systems and look better than it did when it came out, um, I'm always for that. Mm-hmm. So, is it a remake or a remaster? It's a it's re- remake. It's a remake. Nice. So it's it's actually the the studio behind it is actually. The same studio that did the remaster for the PS3, the, they mm-hmm. did the Shadow Colossus and Ico remaster, Blue Point Games. So uh, they have confirmed it's not just a remaster; it's a remake. They said the game content is the same as the original version, but all the assets are being remade completely. And on top of that, um, they are overhauling the controls to be more modern, to feel more modern. Because the controls for Shadow of the Colossus are kind of notoriously they're clunky. Kinda, they're kind of iffy, yeah. So they're they're trying to modernize that. And hopefully, it's that's what out. that's what I'm most excited for. If they, but, if they touch up the controls, yeah. that was the one thing I I, I went back and played mm-hmm. through it again recently, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's just like it felt a little clunkier than I remember, especially just the horse mm-hmm. riding. I think yeah, the, the navigation as far as him is concerned. Uh-huh. It was fine, but like going yeah. back and uh, horseback riding was. It was felt kind of <laughs> it felt kind of loose and right, right, right. clumsy at parts, kind of slow. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully it, it, it's a little bit more responsive. But right. they're also they're also leaving the original controls as an option for oh, people nice. who are super so people who are super purists and they don't want them to ruin it with their dumb modern controls. <laughs> yeah. They can still play. They can still play the old control. So it's oh, not be crazy. The only thing that kind of disappointed me is when I heard initially it was going to be a remake and not a remaster, I was hoping they'd add like a, a few more Colossi, maybe like two or three right. more. But from, nice. what I, from what I understand, it's exactly the same game, just with completely redone assets and a tighter control scheme. Okay. Hmm. Is it still through ICO? Is it still like the whole is it ICO collection thing? What is uh, no, that, what's the company I think that did it? It's, uh, the company is Blue Point Games. Blue point. Okay. Okay. So I don't think Ico's a part of it. It's just Shadow of the Colossus. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that'll be fun. That'll be really fun and different. Yeah. But I, 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 I would love to go through that game again with, with modern visuals. So that's what I'm excited for. What about you, Eric? Well, one question on that though. Team Ico is still overseeing it though, right? I mean, they're just not completely uh, handing over their IP, are they? I believe they said that. The I game mean, they may not be working. Wasn't that involved much this time? Okay. So well, I guess it, if it's a copy, there's pot, really so. no need to be. Yeah, if they're just redoing the assets. True. And from the, from the trailer, it's not like they're changing the look of the Colossi. They're literally just rebuilding the assets to look nicer, but it still looks like the same the same Colossi. Like they took out some of the the weird glowy stuff. Like there's mm-hmm. a few like when I was watching the trailer and uh, mm-hmm. they like like some of the um, armbands and stuff like used to glow with like mm-hmm. their high, the high, hieroglyphics or whatever on it. Like kind of oh. were glowing, but yeah. on the new one those aren't glowing. <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. like we're, we're, I'm sure like hardcore fans are gonna notice yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and the the old game was very uh, the whole game looked kind of hazy and over bloomed. Right, right. Like it had that kind of dreamy quality to it and i think people might miss that from an artistic perspective because it did look right. kind of cool that way right but, uh but yeah it looks good yeah so for me um 
it was my surprise as well as something I'm actually really pumped about. Um, the Mario Rabbids crossover. Um, oh. it, it was like before. <laughs> Everyone knew it was going to uh, happen. So that wasn't, yeah. the, that wasn't the question. I was like, how is this going to fit? What's it going to be? Luigi's carrying a goddamn cement mixer in his hand, it looks like. Mario has like a <laughs> Mega Man blaster on his arm. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then they announced it's going to be an XCOM style tactics game. And right, oh my that. god, I am pumped, but I did not see that coming. <laughs> Granted, this is not developed by Nintendo. This is an Ubisoft game. Oh, but really? I, I, think it's, I think it's Ubisoft. Um, fuck, I hope I didn't mess it up because Ubi did Raymond Rabbits, right? But either way, um, either way, it's not really Nintendo. But this is something I did not expect with Mario IP. This is a tactical-based shooter where you are just attacking people and the way you run around the open world and then you hit just, um, battle areas, it just, I was stunned. It looks really fucking awesome. Yeah, it is Ubisoft, hey, but um, yeah, you're right. it's just crazy to think that Mario was in XCOM. Think XCOM, how <laughs> nitty gritty XCOM was in the strategy <laughs> realm. And then now you got Mario there and they've introduced some cool mechanics and I'm just fucking thrilled. I'm going to get that shit <laughs> as soon as it comes out. It's going to be awesome. Definitely Nintendo, got the report. Nintendo, <laughs> so they've got these iconic characters that have been around for decades, not just years, decades. So it's cool to see them finding new and inventive ways to incorporate those characters without just a million sequels of the games. As right. well as Nintendo as a whole, I'll go ahead and say this. They shocked me. They rocked the fuck out of E3, and they're oh, actually yeah, being they kind of progressive. They're letting Ubisoft work with their IP. We're talking mm -hmm. the preeminent IP in the video game industry is fucking Mario. And they're letting yeah. another company work with Mario. Right. They're That's working pretty with, crazy. They're working with That's Microsoft to bring on Minecraft onto the platform. I mean, M Nintendo is doing what they need to to make people forget how poorly they handled the Wii U. Yeah. I can't wait to see those sick 4K Minecraft graphics, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. You what if it's it. really good? You what if, it. what if it's really good? Like, what if it, when it comes out, it's like, they, it's just like the best Minecraft you've ever It looks good. <laughs> Have you guys seen the 4K screenshots they've shared? That actually looks good. I saw a couple where there's some, there's some stuff that's not just blocks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> what I think would be really funny is if they took, like... You know how however many pixels is on on like the blocks you could see the pixels if each of those if it was just scaled to 4k to where like one of those is still one pixel but it's in 4k so you could like you've got this huge view and like your guy's really tiny in the small center because there's only it's only like 16 pixels wide right <laughs> it'd be ridiculous <laughs> Did they add shaders to it? That's a uh, Dark Soul brings up a good point. Is, are they adding shaders more than just? I think it had case? shaders I on it. So I would assume so. Because if they're doing that, th th that's pretty cool. I, I still would like to see it. I know that they did. Um, there was a really cool tech demo that someone did. They took uh, Minecraft stuff and they put it in like Unreal Engine, and they added mm -hmm. all the lighting. And then they had just like a guy walk through like an Unreal Engine Minecraft, yeah. and it nice. looked super sick. It looked really cool. <laughs> But I don't think that's the Minecraft we're going to be getting. <laughs> right, I, right. But it's going to look a lot better. It will. I have no doubt about mm. that. This is <laughs> we'll this is see. Microsoft actually doing it now. You have to remember, originally that was done by Indy. Now you have right, Microsoft but, resources that can say, you know what, let's make this a little prettier. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, it's still Minecraft. Like... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there, there is there is a backpack uh, probably a truckload of skepticism that goes in with saying that that's going to be anything more than minecraft it's it's a yeah. I, I can't i could not measure the amount of skepticism no, no I'm, into that. I, I'm not saying that i mean don't get me wrong right, it's still right. gonna be minecraft but keep in mind the last night is pixels it's pixel art and it looks beautiful don't mm -hmm. sell short what could be done to minecraft to make that look better no yeah. I, i'm with you i'm with you Ah, uh, so with that, I think we um, kind of summed up our first go at some E3 stuff. Um, when Tom gets back in town, we will be hitting up some more E3 news for sure. Um, so if you guys have some stuff that we missed over that you want us to talk about next week, just tweet at us at uh, 72 PC Podcast on Twitter. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, you can always check out some of our old casts at our um, YouTube channel. We also hopefully will start getting some shorter content up there for you guys at uh, 72 Pin Connector. <laughs> And other than that, 
I think that's all we got for you this week. So, until next week, game on. Bye. Take care.